A protest against police violence in Portland turned deadly over the weekend after an armed man shot and killed a 60-year-old BLM activist. So now, look, um, June uh, Knightley uh, was fatally shot on a Saturday night while volunteering uh, to direct traffic during a protest against police violence. That's when a har armed ho uh, homeowner, allegedly, confronted her small group uh, and opened fire on the crowd. A witness claimed the man immediately fired these volunteers. Knightley was killed and five others were injured. That shooter has been identified by Oregon Live as Benjamin Jeffrey Smith, a 43-year-old machinist who has lived in Portland um, for about 14 years in the area. As journalist Sergio Olmos wrote on Twitter, a victim says a man approached her and a few other women and screamed that they were terrorists responsible for violence in the city. Again, they were unarmed. They didn't have any, uh, or they weren't actually doing anything other than trying to direct traffic. Uh, and then he had yelled a misogynistic slur at them and said, if I see you come past my house, I will shoot you. And of course, he then shot them. Now, there's uh, stuff about Smith that has come out uh, about how he's been influenced by right-wing media as well as right-wing reporter Andy No, a very big follower of Andy No. Smith's brother told the newspaper that he, as Oregon Live put it, had grown increasingly angry at demonstrations he set in the northeast Portland neighborhood. He was upset about citywide protests, homeless people in the area, and the COVID-19 health mandates and was known to collect guns. According to Oregon Live, Smith shot into the crowd and one of the demonstrators had returned fire. Uh, the local KPTV, that was, by the way, um, I have to note that the, the, the five that were shot, right, they were the ones that were unarmed. There was another person nearby who did return fire. Uh, now, the local KPTV reported that the protest at Portland's Normandale Park was organized in solidarity with Amir Locke, a 22-year-old man who was shot and killed as police executed a no-knock warrant on February 2nd in Minneapolis. One of the victims nightly was part of a group of women who were volunteering as part of the motorcade group working on traffic and logistics ahead of the protest, which was planned for the Northeast Portland Park. Kathleen Sadat described nightly to Oregon Live saying, she was a warm, kind, and giving, uh, giving and kind person who spent time trying to think of things that she could do to make the world better and to make herself better in the world. Whereas you're gonna see Smith is the opposite. Apparently there are violent and uh, anti-Semitic social media posts that have been linked to him under the name of Polybun. So now understand that like, uh, sometimes Social media, it, you have to be very careful when you look at the social media of people um, because you might get the wrong person. But based on what I have seen from this polybun, right, uh, it seems to be the same kind of person. So now, uh, some of polybun's posts included cheering a man on who had murdered his neighbors over a small property dispute, supporting Kyle Rittenhouse, and by the way, there was that warning that, that hey, if uh, Kyle Rittenhouse is let go, um, because he did go into that uh, into that protest, and he ended up shooting two people, uh, that this was going to lead to more people bringing guns to protests. And so what happened? You had somebody that brought a gun to a protest and then shot five people, killed one. So now, uh, he also had some wildly anti-Semitic posts talking about the Jewish question. Also, according to chat logs, he had openly talked about bringing guns to different places, including a furry convention. Now, he's a furry. Not, not that actually matters. I don't really care what you do or what you dress up as. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't mean you're violent. In fact, a lot of the furry community has distanced themselves and had outed uh, Polly Bunn. Uh, and so they denounced this guy, but he had also talked about openly shooting communists and Antifa. And according to his roommate, he had been radicalized 
uh, for several years, at least since the Obama administration. Uh, in fact, his roommate, Christian, uh, Christine Christensen, told OPB that Smith let her stay with him for free initially, saying that when I first moved in, he seemed fine. Wasn't that bad of a guy? She then said that he became more radicalized over the years, especially during the administration of Donald Trump, and had heard him yelling racial slurs in his room and deriding women. As the years went on, he had just gotten more and more radicalized. He got angrier and angrier. He said, uh, I have not been comfortable living with him for a while. I did not feel safe with him, especially this last two years with the whole COVID thing. I think that made him even more angry. And of course, he had had a switch in his political identity, going from F the police to Blue Lives Matter just within a year and described him, she described him as a very fly-off-the-handle kind of guy who made her uncomfortable. Now, what is the underlying, I think, motivation, or I, and not really motivation, motivation, but like what fed into this radicalization that eventually led to him being motivated to do violence against Black Lives Matter protesters? Right-wing media. It's the thing that underlines all of these attacks. The, my, the, the guy was a huge fan of Andy No. Andy No claims to be a journalist covering Antifa and the so-called violent leftist mobs, but in reality, he's been using his social media to push biased opinions along with selecti selectively edited videos to work people up in order for some of them, or at least it leads to some of these people, to go and take their anger out, arm themselves, and take their anger out on Antifa or BLM protesters. Many right-wingers end up doing these uh, this violence uh, against protesters. One Portland activist who tracks No claim, uh, said this, no signals this is a person that should be targeted and should be harassed and should be threatened. Andy puts a target on them, and that results in the person being doxxed. And Andy is giving people explicit permission to unleash hatred and violence on people and absolutely knows what he is doing, end quote. Now, for his efforts, of course, Andy No has been physically assaulted himself. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with anybody phys being physically assaulted. Don't do that. It's wrong. And what it does is it actually fires up the far right even more against protesters. In fact, Fox News then uses that and gets to paint all protesters as violent Antifa uh, and, and terrorists and people burning down entire buildings uh, or, or cities. How much have we heard that? And then, of course, it also gives outlets like the establishment media, CNN, to come out and say the same thing. Brian Stelter, oh, I can't believe these violent Antifas would attack this journalist and Andy No. So now if you think, wait, hold on, uh, these people were just here peacefully protesting. They weren't involved in the violence. They're not Antifa. Antifa isn't a thing. It's not even, it's not a real, it's not a real group. But see, here's the thing. It doesn't matter to the far right. The far right runs off hatred, fear, and grievance politics, anger, and of course, victimization. The feeling that, you know, they're being victimized by people who are fighting for civil rights. And they also enjoy intimidation. Their violent rhetoric leads to situations where some people, like Smith, who are already seemingly type, deeply troubled, end up being compelled to do violence against other people. This is what we call stochastic terrorism. Now, the police, however, are also in some hot water. In fact, the Portland police say that, oh, no, no, we're, 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 where's an investigation? Uh, and our investigation indicates this incident started with a confrontation between an armed home, homeowner and armed protester. Now, originally, they refused to release the name of the person who had shot um, uh, these uh, who had done this mass shooting. Now, here's what they said. The scene was extremely chaotic and a number of witnesses were uncooperative with the responding officers. Most people on the scene left without even talking to police. Why would you, I mean, if you're there to, you know, do a protest against the police, um, 
Why would you want to talk to police? Mm. Now, um, they also said, this is a very complicated incident. Uh, and investigators are trying to put this puzzle together without having all the pieces. And not only that, but you had Portland Police Chief, uh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Nathan Shepard telling the Daily Beast, quote, Unfortunately, not all cases are simple. In some, a determination has to be made of who is a suspect and who is a victim. Releasing names prematurely before all the facts are known could have catastrophic effects on the investigation and any person who might eventually be considered a victim and their family. Now, police uh, in Portland have also been accused of favoring right-wing protesters and targeting BLM and peaceful uh, protesters. And so, now look, the names are out. Obviously, uh, Ben had some real issues, especially with BLM protesters uh, in general. And from what I can see, started a confrontation that led to the death of a 60-year-old disabled queer anti-racist activist who was just peaceably assembling to protest police brutality. Uh, this is what happens, unfortunately, when narratives, violent narratives from the far right about Antifa and BLM being terrorists continues to go uh, unchallenged.